okay this is not every day that i get this excited but holy moly look at this we got our hands on intel's next gen core ultra 200 as desktop cpus guys arrow lake s today's video is going to be super super exciting because as i've shown you just now we got our hands on intel's brand new next generation core ultra desktop cpus a lot of people have been like eagerly waiting regarding the reviews how are these new cpus going to perform benchmarks performance tests and today in this video we'll be doing all of that guys so it's going to be like a very interesting video and this sort of content that i'm showing you people right it's some exclusive stuff guys one of the very first to actually get our hands on in indian market on that note make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you people can watch them as soon as i post it so guys with this brand new core ultra desktop cpus intel has changed a lot guys new platform new architecture new socket and also obviously you'll get like a brand new motherboard support as well right so first of all let me tell you this year intel's main goal was to focus on the efficiency guys and to do that they had to entirely reconfigure the chip layout and also the architecture that is how they've reduced the overall power consumption now some of you people might be like hey why is intel focusing on the efficiency why not directly focus on the performance and try to squeeze out as much as performance just like how they've been doing for the last couple of years right like see if your cpu is like pretty efficient right it won't run that hot it'll run much cooler so you don't need like powerful 360 mm aios or maybe like liquid cooling solutions no you don't need that you can compromise a bit over there and save money at the same time if your cpu is running cooler you will have much headroom space for overclocking right so oc potential is also greatly improved not only that if you have like much efficient cpu you don't need like full tower large cases with plenty of ventilation and cooling purpose you can build powerful pcs in much smaller compact form factor guys so you're getting plenty of benefits and advantages with your cpu being efficient so during the announcement intel has launched five variants of the core ultra cpus you're getting one core ultra 9 two core ultra 7 and two core ultra 5 so basically you are getting options for like with and without integrated graphics and all of these will be unlocked the cpus guys so that's a good thing and as i've shown you just now we got a special media kit from intel and in the kit we are getting two cpus one is core ultra 9 and the other one is core ultra 5 and today in this video our main focus will be on the flagship level cpu guys core ultra 9 285k and i'm telling you right the kind of specs features once i tell you everything you people will be like pretty surprised and i'm pretty sure you are like very excited about the benchmarks how are the overall performance gaming tests and what sort of gains you're getting from the previous gen right in this video we will be covering all of that so before we directly get started let me actually tell you what exactly is new over here on this brand new cpus so first of all you're getting a brand new desktop platform guys and obviously you're getting a brand new socket design and new motherboard support as well the new socket is going to be called as LG1851 and for that the new series motherboards you're getting obviously Z890 series. A lot of people were like eagerly waiting when will Intel finally move on to TSMC process? Well it has actually happened this year guys. Intel has finally moved on from their Intel 4 process to TSMC 3 nanometer process for this brand new Core Ultra series CPUs guys which is actually much more advanced than the counterpart Zen 5 which is based on a 4 nanometer process from TSMC. SMC. Anyways, first of all, let me tell you about the main CPU we'll be focusing today, which is Intel's Core Ultra 9285K. Intel's Core Ultra 9285K is a 24 core. 24 thread CPU. Now one thing you might have noticed is, hey, why are the number of cores and number of threads same on this CPU? Well, Intel has actually got rid of hyperthreading. So there is no hyperthreading concept. For your info, if you don't know, hyperthreading used to allow to run more than one number of thread on a single physical core. So that offered a much improved multi-threaded performance. But now hyperthreading has been removed. So that is also making me very curious how is the overall gaming performance or multi-threaded performance is gonna be. So out of those 24 cores present on this core ultra 9 right you're getting 8p cores and 16 e cores with a total of 36 mb catch and not just the cpu part guys if you actually look at the frequency as well max turbo clock frequency this has also changed so previously on the 14 gen max turbo clock was up to like 6 gigahertz out of the box right now they've actually reduced it to like 5.7 gigahertz guys with the thermal velocity boost keeping the cpu part aside major improvements are also coming to the gpu so you're getting an upgraded integrated GPU which is actually based on Intel's XCLPG architecture. This is actually the same GPU that is found on Intel's Core Ultra Series 1 laptops guys. Unfortunately not the newer one present on the Lunar Lake laptops. And keeping that aside, 
This also makes the very first Intel CPU to introduce their NPU guys, making them AI ready for your desktops. So the integrated NPU that you're getting over here is also not the newest one found on the Series 2 Lunar Lake laptops. In fact, it is the same NPU 3 that is found on the Series 1 Meteor Lake laptops guys with a peak performance of up to 13 tops. So that was to give you like a brief idea on what exactly was new with this brand new platform and the CPUs as well. So let me also tell you like what sort of performance gains you can expect over here. Intel has definitely given us some numbers but they've separated them for p cores and e cores guys so this time on the new core ultra cpus you're getting line curve p cores which are probably the fastest p cores you can get for desktop cpus and intel is saying that these brand new p cores offer up to nine percent ipc uplift compared to the previous 14th gen cpus guys i was actually hoping for some double digit ipc improvements over here but again as i've told you whole focus was mainly on the efficiency keeping the p cores aside and talking about the e cores you're getting skymont e cores over here and e cores there's a huge improvement guys intel is saying that you can see almost up to like 32 percent ipc uplift improvement in the e cores compared to the previous 14th gen cpus again as i've told you these are just numbers given by the company we will be doing the benchmarks and performance tests and i will be sharing my opinions and thoughts at a later part in the video so along with the cpus we also got a brand new motherboard from isus guys this is their rog maximus z890 hero edition gaming motherboard featuring their brand new lg 1851 socket and also a lot of improvements guys so major differences only come in the connectivity side and the number of pci lanes totally you're getting around like 48 pci lanes cpu plus chipset and out of that you're getting 20 pci 5.0 lanes and not to miss out you're getting some next gen fast connectivity features like wi-fi 7 support is also there usb thunderbolt 4 and 5 integration guys so this is something that i'm really looking forward to test out and that is pretty much it guys main improvements on the motherboard section so enough with the discussion part guys i know you people are also like pretty curious to check out the performance and numbers right so we'll directly jump into that before that let me quickly tell you about the test bench setup i'll be using so today as i've told you our main focus will be on intel's core ultra 9285k and talking about the gpu i wanted to pair like a really powerful gpu because this is also like a flagship cpu from the uh, company right so we will be going for inno 3d's rtx 4080 super guys and with this sort of setup i'm pretty sure we should be able to easily handle 4k gaming anyhow i'll show it to you in a moment talking about the ram i'll be using like a 32 gb ram kit ddr5 clocked at 6400 mega transfers per second from kingston and last but not the least talking about the cooling solution i will be using a 360 mm aio for the core ultra 9 now intel did mention that it's an efficient cpu right so let's see what kind of thermals and cpu temperatures we'll get with this sort of setup so i've ran a couple of benchmarks over here guys like geekbench 6 cinebench and coming to cinebench people were actually asking me to showcase both r23 and also 2024 cinebench variant so we will be covering both of them in this video starting off with our geekbench 6 cores there you go the scores are on your screen and as you people can see core ultra 9285k got a single core score of 3086 and a multi-core score of a whopping 22153 now initially i was a bit skeptical guys because i told you right intel has totally got rid of hyper threading concept so how is the overall multi-threaded performance is gonna be but looks like there is no sort of compromise on the overall real-time performance guys well that is actually a good thing to know so i've also done like a detailed comparison between intel's core ultra 9285k and also the previous gen 14th gen i9 14900k plus amd's ryzen 9 9950x as well so have a look at the scores if you people can see we're not getting any major gains compared to the previous 14th gen i9 but yes you're getting an improvement over here very subtle improvement i'd say guys 3065 to 3086 in the single core segment very nominal i would say but in the multi-core segment we are definitely seen a good upgrade i would say guys as i've told you intel was mentioning there's an ipc uplift of roughly around like nine percent right though i would have really appreciated to see double digit ipc uplift considering it's a generational upgrade but anyways if you compare it with amd's counterpart ryzen 9 9950x the single core performance is actually a bit lower but again on the multi-core segment it blows out the 9950x by a decent margin one more thing i've observed which i'll have to mention over here is so i was testing this setup with two different kind of motherboards guys one was with msi motherboard and the other with an asus motherboard i'm not sure what the reason was but i got like different scores in geekbench and you know these sort of benchmarks have a look at the geekbench scores which i got using a previous msi motherboard so there we actually got a slightly higher single core performance now i'm not sure what the reason for that might be whether it was bios upgrade or maybe bios settings but i've tried to keep everything very common on both the setups but anyways these are the results that i've been getting again guys this is like the very first wave of checking out the cpu 
CPUs, right? Over time, I'm pretty sure Intel will be releasing some BIOS upgrades and also driver updates as well. And we can definitely see some sort of performance improvement. I'll keep you guys posted on that. Now, moving on to Cinebench series. First, let's start off with R23 benchmarks. Core Ultra 9285K got a single core score of 2312 and a multi core score of 41,209, guys. So, pretty good scores, I would say. If you compare it with the previous gen i9 14900K, not much of a difference, I would say, in terms of overall performance. In fact, the single core performance is slightly a bit lower, I would say, and though not that big of a difference, but still, it is lagging behind i9 14900K. But coming to multi core performance, Intel has blown away the 14 gen i9, guys. I mean, look at the kind of difference you're getting 37,000 to almost 41,209. And in Cinebench, Intel definitely took a lead over the Ryzen 9 9950X in terms of single core, but slightly again falls behind multi core segment, guys. But I'm telling you, right, very neck to neck competition is going on. Moving over to 2024 variant of Cinebench R24, here are the scores Core Ultra 9285K got a single core score of 133 and a multi core score of 2327, guys, which is the highest in the list of competition over here and definitely beats both AMD and Intel's own 14th gen i9 as well, 14900K by a good lead. I mean, look at the results over here. Okay, so far benchmarks are definitely looking promising, but the main thing comes down to like day to day sort of performance, right? Either it be productivity, content creation, or even the gaming section. So, first we'll directly jump into the gaming benchmarks and check out what kind of FPS and performance we'll be getting in modern AAA titles. To show you this test, right, we'll be playing a couple of AAA title games, quite hardware intensive, and starting off with Horizon Forbidden West. This is a very graphic intensive game, guys, and definitely puts a lot of load on both the CPU and GPU. So, we will be be playing all of these AAA games at native 4K resolution to put maximum loads on the hardware. So there you go, as you can see in the settings, we're playing the game at 4K, very high graphics and that one at 4080 is super, right? So obviously you do have like Nvidia technologies. I want to show you the raw rasterization performance if you build a system like this, right? What kind of performance you can expect? That is the reason. Not bad, right? At 4K, very high graphic preset in Horizon Forbidden West, we were getting an average of around 95 to 100 FPS, guys. Muska smooth gaming. You know, I'll be very honest with you people. Initially, I was a bit skeptical how the gaming performance on the new Core Ultra CPUs will be because there is no hyper threading and stuff like that, right? But after doing some testings and playing a couple of games, right, I don't see any sort of compromise, especially in the performance section, guys. I mean, we are getting a really good frame rate in day to day sort of gaming session. Look at this, game runs very well on this sort of setup. Moving on, let's also play one more AAA game, Spider-Man Remastered. This game also we will be playing at 4K native resolution and the graphic preset set to maximum guys, basically very high. Here we'll be doing two kinds of tests. In the first test, we will not be utilizing ray tracing or DLSS, we'll only be doing like a raw rasterization performance and see what sort of raw stock FPS we will get. Okay, as you people can see with these sort of settings in Spider-Man at 4K, we were getting an average of around 140 to 150 FPS guys and quickly enabling ray tracing and also DLSS enabled set to balanced profile. Now we were getting around like 125 to 130 FPS. I mean, come on, even with ray tracing enabled and DLSS also on at 4K resolution, we were still getting like triple digit FPS. Not bad Intel, kudos to the team. On the overall right, the Core Ultra 9285K offers a very balanced sort of experience for both the gaming side as well as productivity and content creation. Let me tell you about the power consumption as well, especially under gaming loads. While playing AAA games, I compared both Core Ultra 9 and 14900K and roughly found an average of around 50 to 60 watt of lower power draw with the newer gen Core Ultra CPUs guys. And not just gaming, even if you look at productivity or maybe like content creation applications, right? The new Core Ultra 9 was consuming roughly around like 35 to 40% lower power than the previous gen 4900K. And this resulted in slightly better overall thermals with the same kind of setup. So let's have a closer look at the CPU thermals and talk about that. To give you a better idea, I'll not just show you like simple CPU stats on your screen, but a detailed real time CPU package details pulled straight from hardware info. Under 4K gaming loads with ray tracing enabled, the CPU is fluctuating around 60 to 65 degrees centigrade. And mind you, as I've told you at the beginning, 
we were using 360 mm AIO and the same AIO was used on the previous gen 4900K as well. So on the previous older gen CPU, the CPU temperatures were roughly around 70 to 72 degrees centigrade guys. Are you people noticing the difference? So roughly on an average, the newer gen Core Ultra 9 runs almost like 7 to 8 degrees cooler than the previous 4900K in across 8 to 9 AAA titles. Again, mind you, the current gen AIO models are not actually designed for the newer platform, right? Because you're getting a totally new socket. So what happened is Intel has mentioned that the hotspot on these new CPUs has been shifted from the central area to a slightly upper right corner. And because of that, these older AIOs which you might use might not offer the best cooling solution. So we were actually told that newer models AIO will be dropping very soon in the market and that will come with a special LGA 1851 offset bracket and that will overall reduce the CPU temperatures further by roughly around like 3 to 4 percent. So that is something we'll have to wait and see guys. I'll keep you guys posted. So guys, what do you people think about the new Intel CPUs? I'd love to know your thoughts as well. So definitely comment down below in the video's comment section. There are much more tests and you know benchmarks I'd like to do but given the time frame and initial stages of testing, let's wrap it up for the day. All the benchmarks, gaming tests, whichever I've shown you in this video right were done at stock Intel performance settings and that too in the BIOS I didn't do anything just XMP enabled guys that's it. There is still a lot more potential and headroom available for overclocking. You can even squeeze out a little bit more performance considering the max power draw we saw was only around like 260 watt. End of the day it all comes down to the pricing right and Intel has mentioned that the launch pricing for the Core Ultra 9 would be same as the previous gen 4900K at around 589 US dollars which when converted to Indian currency right is roughly around 50-51 thousand rupees almost like 10-12 thousand less than your Ryzen 9 9950X but again for this new CPU you'll obviously need to buy like a brand new motherboard right because of that new socket design so if you're planning to upgrade just for the CPU then you'll have to consider the entire ecosystem upgrade guys because the new motherboards do not have support for DDR4 as well so if you've recently built a PC or setup right nothing to worry about you won't see major upgrades or performance gains but again if you're planning to upgrade from a very old setup maybe like four or five year old PC setup right then you'll definitely see a huge improvement in both performance and especially efficiency as well so that's it time to wrap it up I hope you all enjoyed watching the video and got lots of useful information make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel for more such awesome videos and I'll see you all in my next one